Hey everybody, Jim again. I wanted to give you a quick tour of Nano DLP and how the interface works and how you can get started. So you actually access your Raspberry Pi through a web browser. I've got a DNS name entered here. You could use a numeric address. Either one doesn't really matter, but punch that in and it should take you to this home screen that you see now. Across the top are the different settings pages and controls that you have in the program. On the right side, it tells you the current build number, the software version. It'll also notify you here when there's a software update available. And there's also a way to make a Wi-Fi connection here if you don't have a wired Ethernet. So other things on this page, there's a little dashboard here that shows you CPU utilization, uptime, temperature, things like that. There's a log that you can toggle on and off at the bottom. Uh, and this shows you everything. You'll see the G code as it's being sent to the Arduino. You can see what layer you're printing, the progress of a file that you're slicing, all of that in the log. And then above that, this kind of middle section lists what plate you're printing, the layer, time remaining, things like that. You'll have pause or cancel and resume controls here, as well as power off and reset for the whole thing. And it'll show you a little image preview of what that layer looks like, what's actually being sent to the projector and is currently printing. So that's on the home page. You can get to it with the Nano DLP logo here. The next one over is plates, which is uh, referring to build plates. This is where you'd actually add an STL file and prepare it to print. So you can click on add, it asks you to name it. You pick your profile, which is what resin and color and exposure, things like that, that you're using. Uh, and then select an STL file to upload. Let's do one here. I'll do a calibration cube. I'm going to use this SF100 resin. Uh, profile here and when you click submit it'll start processing your plate you'll see a little notification here that it's working on it and if you went back to the main page you can turn on the log and you can actually follow along as it goes through all the different layers this one processed pretty quickly a more complex file would take a little longer or since it's based on layer number something that's got a, a larger z dimension would take a lot longer to process but once it's started you can start to print actually so on plates Find the one that you want. You can say print from start and it will. There's also a preview function here. You can click on layers and look at the different heights of the object as it goes. I've got some letters in the middle. That's what these notches are. All the way up to the very top and the uh, end of the file. So this one's a labeled calibration cube. That's why it says top and bottom. The words in the middle are front, back, left, and right. So you can make sure that your projector is oriented the right way. So that's the plates page. Let's go to Z-axis calibration. The part you'll want to pay attention to is on the right side here. You actually have manual controls. You can move your platform up and down and do some fine tuning and adjustments and positioning this way. Be very, very careful here because they do go up to 200 millimeters, which is quite a distance. You don't want to click on the wrong dimension and accidentally crash your machine. So be very cautious about that as you're using the manual controls. Next on the projector calibration page, there are several different test patterns here that you can send out of the Raspberry Pi into the projector. This HD calibration pattern is really useful for focusing and making sure that you've got that correct. The boundaries calibration pattern is, is really good for making sure that you've got the zoom within the bounds of your resin vat. So uh, take a look at these and, and use them as you need to. There are also some controls here to turn the projector on and off, operate its shutter, It'll also track your lamp hours if you've got RS-232 plugged in, so you can do those sorts of things on this page as well. Moving along to the printer profiles page, these are the actual print settings that you'll use. So different resins, different colors, different quality levels uh, will all be specified here, and you can come up with an archive of which ones work for you with which colors and resins and shapes and all of that and save your print settings here. So let's look at one. If you click on Edit, uh, of course, you can name it and do things like that, but what you want to pay the most attention to are the burn-in layers and the normal layers. So the burn-in layers are the very first ones that happen in the print, and you really, really want those to be solid. You want them to be cured very well, even over-cured sometimes if it's just a platform to hold things up, because the whole rest of the print attaches here, and if that's weak or flimsy or pulls apart or is soft and flexible, it can't affect the rest of your print. So. This setting uh, may be applicable to you. It might be a different kind of resin. Is doing a 50 micron layer, and it cures that 50 microns for 20 seconds. So that's our burn-in layer. Uh, it does four burn-in layers, actually. Then for the normal layers, it increases the thickness, actually. We're doing 100 microns for that same 20 seconds. 
Some people will use the same time and increase the distance for the normal layers. Other people will use the same distance and increase the time for the burn-in layers. You may find one that works better than the other depending on your resin or your projector, but uh, those are the places to change it. The other setting here that's worth taking a look at is the lift setting. So the UV light flashes the layer and then it has to peel it off of the vat floor and that's this distance. So five millimeters is what it lifts for the burn-in layers. And then I've been able to get away with three millimeters for the normal layers, but you may play with those. You might see a, a print that doesn't completely come unstuck or uh, on the other side of the coin, you might notice one that pulls way, way off further than it needs to be and adds time to the print. So you can fine tune these depending on your part. There are a few other things here about speed and pixel dimming. You can do specific G code for layers, all kinds of things like that. Also some scaling and, and very advanced options, but to get started, worry about your burn-in layers and your normal layers and you'll be good to go. So next, let's take a look at the setup page. You've already seen a little bit of this if you set up the USB path that we used for our Arduino board earlier, but there's a lot of other things here too. Uh, you can set up custom G-code commands, which uh, I'll put some of those in the notes of the video. You can control your projector shutter, change things about speed and the motor. One that's really critically important is that you set your projector's resolution correctly. So my projector, its native resolution is 1280 by 800. Yours might be 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. There's a lot of different resolutions, but make sure this is set correctly so that the Raspberry Pi outputs the video that your projector wants to see, and then you'll have a much easier time getting your resolution and your scaling and your dimensions correct later. Another note, this motor and actuator settings section uh, talks about your stepper motor degrees per step and the micro stepping, your lead screw, all that sort of thing. This only is referring to an onboard stepper driver. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi with a Pi plate or a Pi hat that's your motor controller, you'll change the settings for that here. If you're using a gerbil board or an Arduino or a ramps board, anything like that, you'll want to make that change in the terminal on that board instead of here. It won't make a difference for an outboard controller. So set your settings, click submit, and you'll be good to go there. The other section that's really important to look at in the settings is the tools tab. There are a couple of different uh, advanced and config things you can do here. One thing you'll definitely want to do is expand your file system. Uh, if you've done other things with Raspberry Pi, this is one of the important first steps. What it does is it makes the partition that it's running on the size of the full SD card. So after you've saved things and you've run the program a little bit, you don't run out of space because you're using a lot more of it. So expand your file system and restart your Pi. Other things here, you can do the upgrade or the update uh, in case it didn't prompt you there, but you know that there's a new version out, you can do it manually here. Um, you can also force stop, power off, restart, things like that that are pretty handy, as well as some exports. It's always good to have a backup. So that's what's on the setup page that you'll probably want to know about right away. Next is the terminal page. And this is actually the communication with your Arduino. So you can see that there's G code here in yellow, uh, tells it a dimension to move, it tells it a speed to move, uh, all kinds of different commands, and then it acknowledges the commands, et cetera, et cetera. Since this is a gerbil board, to get a help page, send it the dollar sign symbol, and then it responds with more instructions. So the settings that we'll be changing in another video, you actually send dollar dollar to view those. And then it lists all of its settings here. So let's say we wanted to invert this probe pin. Uh, you'd send it the command dollar six equals one. And then the next time you sent dollar dollar to look at the settings, this zero would have changed to a one. Further down, there's steps per millimeter where you're adding uh, larger numbers, not just a, a Boolean one or a zero. There are speeds in here. There's, there's quite a bit. Luckily, there's not a lot that we'll have to change, though, so you'll learn this pretty quickly. So, in short, that's how Nano DLP works. The home page will uh, get you most of what you need, especially while you're printing. The printer profiles page is where you'll set up your presets and your print settings for different resins and, and uh, qualities and things like that. And on plates is where you'll upload an STL file, give it a profile, and actually prepare it to print. So, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the tour and happy printing. Take care.